Hey everybody, Antonio here, and guess what? It's my 50th review of a concert and our opera. And what better way to kick off this milestone than with my review of the Royal Opera House's production of Verdi's La Traviata, starring one of the most favorite singers of all time, Diana Damrau, in the title role of Violetta Valeri. The conductor was Dan Ettinger. The director was Richard Eyre. The revival director was Daniel Dooner. The designs were by Bob Crowley. The lighting design was by Jane Kalman. And the director of movement was Jane Gibson. Now, I already said this in my review of La Traviata. Well, this was a production at the Royal, or excuse me, the Deutsche Oper Berlin, but I will say this again. This is an opera that has basically placed Giuseppe Verdi on the map alongside Rigoletto and Il Trovatore, well, basically on the map as a composer. These were basically the three operas that basically boosted his fame further. And they also touched on some real life issues, but mostly with La Traviata. And with La Traviata, this was basically an opera that was written in his time. Basically, the plot was for his time, unlike the other previous operas where Rigoletto was set in the 1400s and Il Trovatore was set somewhere in the 1300s, 1400s. La Traviata was basically set in the 1800s. And I felt that this added a lot of realism into the mix of Giuseppe Verdi's operas. Also, the role of Violetta Valeri is a very challenging role for any dramatic coloratura soprano. Not only does she have that interpolated high E flat after her sempre libera, but the physical demands of this role is actually quite challenging. I mean, the soprano who sings Violetta has to look very young and has to look very pretty and not just have a very pretty voice, but she also has to have some great acting chops. That's just how challenging the role of Violetta really is. But this opera has definitely, definitely become one of my most favorite operas composed by Giuseppe Verdi. Now that it's out of the way, let's move on to what I thought about the production. I thought it was just absolutely gorgeous. It was just beautiful all around. They basically kept to the time in which this opera was set. It was just magnificent all around. It was so colorful. And the costumes were very, very elegant. I especially loved the women's costumes. They were all flowing and elegant, and it was just so breathtaking. I find this production a lot more colorful than the production done by Götz Friedrich, which was shown at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. This production was so full of life, and it was just so... I know I'm going to sound very repetitive, very gorgeous. There was never, ever a dull moment in this production. There was not a moment where I was scratching my head thinking, does this actually exist? Does this even feel like it's in place with what the libretto was saying? Yeah, this was just absolutely fantastic. The production was just so breathtaking. And what's worth mentioning is that in the first act, we see a picture of Marie Duplessis, who is basically the real-life Violetta Valeri. I thought it was just thrilling and wow. Just wow. This production, like I said, awesome. Very awesome. All around for its gorgeousness, its sheer amount of detail, and 
basically keeping true to what the libretto said. Now, the singers were what really, as in really, made the evening for me. It's no surprise that Diana Damrau is my favorite singer of all time. Hell, my first experience with her was when I saw a couple of YouTube clips with her as the Queen of the Night. And I could really see why this role has become such a fan favorite. Well, because she was able to get the character to a T, to the point where when people think Diana Damrau, they think Queen of the Night. I definitely thought that too, but I always felt that she was absolutely fantastic in the Italian repertoire. Whether she sings Lucia, Amina, Elvira Valton, Violetta, Gilda, you name it. I felt that she was very awesome in the Italian repertoire. Sure, some people think that her German style of music isn't really that compatible, or some people think that it sounds too verismo. But I thought, you know what, what's wrong with these people? I felt that she was terrific as both a singer and as an actress. I pretty much have to say that in my opinion, Diana Damrau is one of the most fantastic singing actresses that I've ever seen on stage. I am dead serious. I have her Queen of the Night on DVD. I have a CD of her, basically entitled Aie di Bravura, and I've also seen a lot of clips of her on YouTube. So what did I think of her performance as Violetta Barri? I absolutely enjoyed every single moment that Miss Damro did as Mademoiselle Violetta Valeri. She was just absolutely breathtaking, especially in the harrowing moments. You basically felt like you were almost about to cry. I was seriously almost about to cry when she was singing Adio del Passato, and especially the scene where Alfredo throws all of his winnings towards her, and she has this beautiful, very somber melody, and I was absolutely grinning, repeat, grinning, when she sang Sempre Libera, aka the cabaletta that occurs after Estrano and A Forselui, Que Lanima. I was just absolutely enthralled with her performance as Violetta. She was just so thrilling all around. And even the end, fans definitely went out of their way to just simply give her a huge round of applause, which she entirely deserved, especially after Sempre Libra. The audience, especially me, went all out, giving her the hugest, and repeat, hugest round of applause that she really, really deserves. And, not to sound cliche, she was definitely the star of the evening. I'm dead serious. She was definitely fantastic. No, no, no bars hold, held whatsoever. She was just awesome all around. Vocally, she was totally in shape. And she was able to be so convincing, whether it's in the happy moments, the sad moments, the moments where she's so full of worry. I thought she was just convincing all around. She is just so up there with the likes of Joan Sutherland, Anna Moffo. Maria Callas, Edita Gruberova, Mariela Devia, and many other singing actresses that come off the top of my head. She is that awesome. She was just fantastic all around. Whether she sings so softly, she sings it very softly and very elegantly. 
When she has to go all out, she definitely went all out. And that high E flat was definitely crystalline. It was crystal clear. So it's no wonder why I definitely love Diana Damrau. She has a crystal clear voice, excellent diction, and a very commanding stage presence. She was definitely the star of the evening. The other singers were actually fantastic as well. The Alfredo was a tenor by the name of Francesco de Muro. I'd never really heard of him before, but his performance as Alfredo was absolutely very good all around. Sure, there were times that he started off pretty okay, but he got a lot better throughout the evening. He was definitely a great musician in terms of his voice. Whether he had to sing pianissimo, he sang pianissimo so heavenly. And his high notes were absolutely crystal clear. Albeit at times they were kind of sharp. His voice kind of reminds me of a younger Marcelo Alvarez. He definitely has that quality that makes Mr. Alvarez so well loved. His great full lyric tenor voice and a pretty commanding stage presence at that and heaps of energy. He was absolutely fantastic all around and he was a pretty decent performer. Sure, he wasn't really on the level of Madame Damrau, but he was able to hold his own pretty well. Then we have Dmitry Hovorostovsky as Giorgio Germont. Now, Dmitry Hovorostovsky is another favorite singer of mine. Why, you ask? Because he has such a commanding stage presence and an equally commanding voice that is extremely perfect for the Verdi and Puccini repertoire, and basically the dramatic baritone repertoire in general. He was absolutely fantastic. He was able to make Giorgio Germont a very dignified and very, very sympathetic man, but at times very dignified. He had this very dignified stage presence, and he was absolutely great in terms of voice. He had this type of ferocity that he uses in his voice, but at times he can sound quite gentle, especially in his scene with Violetta and especially in his aria, Di Provenza il Mar. I was just absolutely moved to tears when he sang this aria. And just like with Damrau, he also received a huge round of applause. So, with three fantastic soloists in the main roles, what did I think about the secondary roles? I thought they were as equally fantastic as well. The flora was Nadezhda Karyatsina. I thought she had such a beautiful voice, and her stage presence was actually pretty good all throughout. She was able to make Flora a very close friend to Violetta and quite cheery as opposed to Violetta's bouts of depression. She was able to make Flora a very cheery and very bubbly person. And as I said, her voice was absolutely gorgeous and timbre all throughout. The Anina was sung by Sarah Pring, who is a mezzo-soprano and has a very, very wonderful voice. It's basically a dark-hued voice because I'm basically a lot more used to the light lyric soprano Aninas, but suffice to say, Sarah Pring as Anina was able to do her job very well in such a very thankless and very minute role with such a very solid voice and a very solid stage presence. She was able to make a lot of great use with such a very small role. And then we have the Baron, Baron Dufault, sung by Michel de Souza. 
he had such a wonderful voice. It was really, really mellifluous. It was quite dark, and it basically has the potential to sing in a lot more dramatic baritone roles. And his stage presence, even though it's a very thankless role, was actually pretty convincing all around. He was able to make such a role as thankless as the Baron of Dufal make it so worthwhile. And then we have the Viscount Gaston, sung by Luis Gomez. He had such a delicate sounding, light lyric tenor voice, and even though he didn't have that much to do, he was a pretty convincing actor all around. Then we have Dr. Grenville, sung by Ji Hoon Kim, a very solid and very round and rich basso voice that I would really, really love to hear him in more basso cantante roles. And even though his role was very minute, he was able to have such a magnificent stage presence all around. He was absolutely fantastic. Then we have Giuseppe, sung by Neil Gillipsy. Absolutely fantastic. Then The Messenger and the Servant, sung by John Bernays and Michael Lesseter. Both of them were really great all around. So, overall, the singing was just absolutely flawless. Superb, exciting, outstanding, excellent, and every other positive adjective that comes off the top of my mind that makes me feel so energized after watching this wonderful production. And there was no doubt, no doubt, that the star of the show was Diana Damrau herself. And the conducting, I thought, was pretty good, albeit at times it was lukewarm, especially in the finale of Sempre Libera. I expected it to be a lot more full of life. I expected it to be more vivace, a lot more presto, a lot more, a bit of, more, a bit of crescendo there. I felt that it was a bit too conservative. I felt that it was a bit small. And sure, it was actually pretty decent in the huge moments, but come on. There has to be moments where it could have a little bit more vivace or a little bit more fire to the fuel. And I thought it was just okay all around. The chorus, absolutely fantastic. The highlights for me definitely have to be the Brindisi, the chorus of the Gypsy Girls, and the chorus of the Matadors and especially the chorus in which they basically shied Alfredo for being cruel to Violetta after throwing his winnings towards her. I thought it was just wonderful all around. So overall, wow. This was such a fantastic 50th review that I've done, even though I didn't really have that much to do, even though this lacks any special effects or anything, but still, it was actually really worthwhile in making this my 50th review, and I have to say thank you to all of my subscribers for keeping up with me so far. Thank you to all my friends who supported me. Thank you as well to my family. Thank you to every acquaintance that I made. You guys are all awesome. And even though I currently have 57 subscribers, I have to say to every one of them, thank you for keeping up with me throughout the years. I know that some of you ended up unsubscribing, but it's okay, really. I mean, I still have a lot to work on in terms of how I deliver myself and how I present myself in terms of my reviews. But even then, I definitely enjoy basically voicing out my thoughts. Sure, I do stutter, as you've noticed, but it's okay. I'm sure that I can get better through time, and I'm sure I can get better through a lot more hard work. And anyways, thank you very much for keeping up with me. This production of La Traviata was extremely appropriate for my 50th review. 
And this was a, definitely a great way to kick this off. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in to my next review, which is going to be tomorrow. And it's going to be a review of Steven Isserlis, who is going to perform some pieces from Elgar, and it's going to be live from the South Bank Center. Until then, this is Antonio signing off and wishing you all a good night, and I hope you all have a good evening. Sure, I didn't get Deanna Damrau's autograph. Yeah, long story short, I was basically waiting for her. Unfortunately, I decided, you know what, maybe better luck next time. Anyways, good night everybody, and to all of my subscribers, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for keeping up with me.